Live from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee, this is your motivational, sensational, inspirational, educational, keenly awaited, highly anticipated edition of how to make more money in real life and also in subtitles, the non-sleazy way. Ladies and gentlemen from around the world, how's everyone doing today? It's me, Jeremy Alexander Newsom, with my buddy, you'll see him in just a second, Bradley Reed. Hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. We got an absolute treat for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Type in a one if you can hear me okay and see me okay. There are some people who are here live broadcasting uh, to everyone around the world. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you're probably in the future. So I'm actually in the past, so this has already happened, but thanks so much for watching the recording anyway. I really appreciate it. Uh, I will say this, I do hope this video or webinar or images, if you're watching this for the very first time, I hope initially you clicked on it and you're like, this sounds a little salesy scammy. Like I'm pretty positive I'm gonna get pitched some kind of like weight loss pill and I'm gonna join some kind of pyramid scheme to sell, you know, internet car battery insurance or something. Like I'm pretty sure this is gonna happen. I kinda hope that you felt that way. Because here's what we're gonna do. Real life trading, that's the name of our company. We are changing the industry standard on how webinars are presented. We're going over the top, we do them for free, and we just absolutely crush the information. We deliver it better than anyone else can possibly. That's our objective in tonight's session, of course, along with a lot of other objectives. So usually, since we are real life trading, this will be a webinar about stock market and strategies and things you can do to improve your portfolio's performance, all that kind of good stuff. But in this particular example, we are gonna be talking about how to make more money. And we're gonna be talking about that not trading related, well, not, not entirely. So every single month at Real Life Trading, we actually have a little bit of a theme. So January, which that's this month, is Extra Income Month, and you can see the rest. Uh, I love Extra Income Month, I love Kids Month. April is really fun, right? I always challenge people to do something that you've never done before, that's April. May is Health and Wellness Month. By the way, Jesse, I see that you're here. May's gonna be fun, man. We're gonna create some kind of challenge, like some kind of diet workout challenge, and we're gonna give it to all the real life traders, and everyone's gonna have to step up and do it. That's gonna be really fun. And you can see the rest of the months that are there, right? So really what we're gonna be doing this month is I want us to focus on making more money. So between now and February 1st, I want to give all of my traders, fans, friends, followers, and families some actionable, real life, take home examples of what we can do like tonight to start making more money. Okay, so I know it's kind of weird for a trading company to be talking about this, but my theory is simple. The reason we're doing this is because I personally believe that in trading or in investing, less is more. And think about it this way. How many times have you been in a trade, for those who might be watching who are traders, and thought to yourself, oh man, this trade looks so amazing. I love it. And you look at that trade, and you look at that trade, and you look at that trade, and for some reason, over the next two or three days, you talk yourself in or out of that trade, and you shouldn't even have messed with it. It actually ended up trading to your target. Had you just left it alone, it would have worked out perfect. Type in a one if there's a lot of people here who just kind of micromanage your trades too much. I'm gonna type in a one, because I definitely used to do that. Do, to do that, that's a very, very hard challenge to break. But this webinar will help with that, actually. Because the goal, and trading is to keep it very, very simple, to keep it easy. It's like, hey, here's the trade, boom, it's doing its thing, I'm not gonna worry about it from here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go make some money over here, right? Because there are a lot of traders out there watching this right now, people who do trade full time. And if you don't, this is gonna be a great webinar for you. Now, we're already four minutes in, if you're thinking, hey, when's this guy gonna get to the point? I promise it will happen, just stay tuned, stay with me. No sales pitch in this entire webinar, I assure you. You're gonna get to the very end, you're gonna go, wow, that was some really good information. Appreciate that. So, tonight, we're gonna be giving you a lot of takeaways. Make sure you have a pen, piece of paper, or if you prefer a pencil, that's totally fine. Maybe a drink of your choice, mine is water, for about the next 60 minutes. And uh, we're gonna be enjoying and having an absolute blast. All right, so here we go. Let's talk about this. You might have seen this guy before. His name is the Warren Buffett, all right? And he has a quote, I'm sure you all have heard a quote very similar to this, never depend on a single income, make investments to create a second source. Now notice that, the word make. When you make something, what do you have to do? You have to, you gotta, you gotta do things, right? When you're making things, like if you're making a, <laughs> sorry, 
almost went down that road. If you're making a cake, <laughs> right? You gotta do ingredients and put stuff in. You gotta make things. So it's not like you can just have free money given to you. We're gonna, you're gonna hear this theme a lot that people who win the lottery, a lot of them go broke for certain reasons because they can't handle the money. So you have to make investments. You have to take the time to do things. So what you do right now, a lot of you have an income from work. Some of you here have an income from trading. And then what we're gonna be talking about tonight also is an income from another source of some kind. So you have income from work and you have another income of some kind. And the income from work could, and trading could easily go to a reducing of your debt. And hopefully at some point, once this debt becomes zero, all three of these just pile into savings. Once you get a bunch of savings all stored up, then you build cash and start investing into other streams, whatever those other streams might be. And obviously, I mean, those are numerous. We're talking millions of opportunities, real estate, creating your own business, growing your trading account, investing in something, buying something, flipping something, selling something. We're gonna be talking about all of those, a lot of those tonight. But ladies and gentlemen, there's no way we can cover every single money-making opportunity out there. Money is boundless. Opportunities are endless. There's no way I can give you all the lists. What we're going to do is we're going to give you a list tonight of things that we've either done personally, things that we've planned on doing, or things that we want to do, or things that we know people have done to make money. So we're going to be talking about that tonight. Now, I'm going to introduce you to a great friend of mine, business partner, best friend, and trader. His name is Bradley Reed with an L-I. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Brad Reed. He's going to be talking about a little bit about the debt portion of this. So I'm going to introduce Brad to the world. Brad, uh, here you go. All right. Thank you, Jeremy. Hi, everyone. Yes, my name is Brad Reed. Sometimes it's Bradley, but I'm not an adverb. So if you do call me Bradley, it's L-E-Y. But yes, Brad Reed here. <laughs> I am a real-life trader, and I'd like to remind you to be good. And by good, I mean get out of debt, achieve your financial dreams, and give generously to your community. For those of you that get to see this video, you now see why I do not broadcast video uh, on the day trading floor. But uh, one thing that is very uh, near and dear to my heart is uh, how to get out of debt, how to make more money, how to build savings, because I made a complete mess of my finances in my 20s. Um, by the time I was 30, I was over 220 grand in debt, and I had to get myself out. So um, now I want to help other people, and Jeremy gives me that opportunity. Real Life Trading gives me that opportunity, and you give me that opportunity. So thank you. Um, in this webinar, we're going to talk about how to make more money. That could be a blessing. We don't want it to be a curse, right? Sometimes the dream can turn into a nightmare. The real trick with money is to control the money and not be controlled by the money. I'm sure everyone here has had an experience where... Uh, you know the money has come in or it's coming in and then all of a sudden you get real stressed about it because you're having to go work for the money instead of having the money work for you. The key tool here is that you need to have a plan. If you're going to increase your income, if you're going to bring in more money, you need to have a plan for that money or else you're going to spend it on something maybe a little bit silly and then a couple of weeks, a couple of months go by and you're saying, hey, I've got all this money coming in. Where is it going? What happened to it? The key tool is a budget. Please, please, please learn how to do a budget if you don't have one already. Um, a lot of these uh, 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 tools that we're talking about or that I'm talking about, a uh, budget, getting out of debt, saving for an emergency fund, saving for retirement, saving for your kid's college, paying off the house, all of these topics and more are covered in a series uh, that's called the Financial Fundamentals. So if you need to go over there, check out YouTube.com, do a search for Real Life Trading Financial Fundamentals. Again, YouTube.com, search for Real Life Trading Financial Fundamentals. Take your credit card out and chop it up because you won't need it. Uh, it's all completely free and it is ready to go for you. Uh, so yeah, guys, Brad is absolutely correct. Now, here's what's beautiful. There were two or three of you uh, who wrote in saying you don't have any debt other than maybe some trading losses that you have, which is fantastic. So here's the deal. If you don't have any debt, making additional income should become one of the easiest things that you do. Like it should be very, very simple, very simplistic, okay? So keep that in mind as we continue on tonight. There's nothing holding you back. It's a huge deal that you're out of debt and congratulations, seriously, give yourself a pat on the back because there's not many people who can say that. So congrats for those who type in. So I don't have any debt, amazing. If you have no debt and you have a lot of cash sitting around, you are primed and ready. So tonight's webinar is entitled, How to Make More Money. How to make more money. Interesting title of a webinar. 
Now again, a lot of people are going to say, oh man, um, I know I'm getting pitched something. Here it comes. It's not going to happen. Here's what we're going to talk about tonight. I hear this question so, so often. How to make more money. Jeremy, how do I make more money? Jeremy, how do I make more money? Jeremy, how do I make more money? Think about it this way, guys. If you um, type in a two, if you have a, a job, like you're working for somebody, for the man, the man's holding you down. All right, there's a lot of twos. And it's okay, right? It's okay to work for somebody. All right. So here's the deal. If you went up to your job, if you went up to your boss and you said, Hey boss, can I have an additional dollar? Can I have one dollar? And your boss gave you one dollar, would he be giving you more money? Yes or no? Yeah, technically, right? The world gives you what you ask of it. So if you say, Hey, can I have more money? All right, here's ten dollars. Boom, you have more money now. Obviously, that's not what we want. I get that. I can totally understand that that's not the goal. The goal is not to make an additional dollar. So here's what we need to do, ladies and gentlemen. The theme, a lot of the themes that we're going to be talking about tonight, one of them is going to be the questions that you ask dictate the quality of your life. So here is one question that I think if you start asking now for the rest of your life, and if you teach your kids and your kids' kids, your grandkids, your nieces, your nephews, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your aunts, your uncles, anyone that you're affiliated with, if people are always after money, you're never gonna obtain it because there's more, there's always more money, there's always more things you can obtain. Here's the question. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is probably one of the biggest takeaways. This is the light bulb of the whole webinar. If you watch nothing else other than this, this takeaway by itself is worth count. I mean, thousands of dollars. This is a breakthrough of monumental proportions. And it might not feel that way to you, but if you ask this question every single day, you will make more money. Type in a three if you're ready. I, I, guys, you just have to trust me on this one. I did it. I asked myself this question so often. And you know what started happening randomly? I started making more money. It was weird. But here it is. How do you or how do I increase my value? There's going to be a better question coming up in just one second, but that's what you want to do. Instead of making more money, you need to become worth more. You need to increase your value. And here's the question. Here is the takeaway. The question you need to ask yourself is, how do I or how can I become more valuable? Think about that. Those are two entirely different questions. Would you guys agree? How can I make more money and how can I become more valuable? That's like, what? That's a totally different question. Now you're putting the ball in your court. So I get asked uh, by people pretty randomly pretty often, hey, Jeremy, so I, I know you teach a lot of people for free. Do you ever give money out to people to, so they can trade with it? And it's like, are, you know, are you asking for money? And they go, well, yeah, yeah, I'm asking for a loan or something. I'm like, okay, well, here's a better question. Instead of asking for money, ask this question, how could you become more valuable? Instead of getting more money, how can you become more valuable? Because if you become more valuable, what will happen? The scales will start, start tipping and you will receive more money. It's weird. It's crazy. So here's the ladder. Here's the how to increase your value. A lot of companies, webinars, presenters will just leave it at that. That'll be the mythical mind guru positive feeling. Hey, guys, here's, here's all you need to do. Just be happy and smile and chant to yourself, I need to make more money. How can I become more valuable? And it'll just happen to you. You know what? No, that's absolute crap. It's not the case at all. You can't just think something and it happens. Here's the deal. You actually have to take val you have to take steps, actionable actions. You have to do things. It's not easy, it's not simple, and it's gonna take work. So what real life training does better than anyone else, in my personal opinion, is we give you a big overarching concept, like how to increase your value. And we give you objective, specific, actionable standpoints that you can take away and do and act upon in order to increase your value. So we're going to build a ladder for you tonight, right now, of how you can increase your value at work. A lot of you typed in twos earlier. Some of you are retired, some of you are full-time traders, but the vast majority of you here and those watching this webinar are still working for someone or even working for yourself, but you still work, which is not a bad thing to work for yourself, by the way. I'm just saying we all work. So here's five ways that you can increase your value at work. Number one is pretty simple, get additional licenses and certificates. That's kind of like a no-brainer. That's like an easy one, right? 
So we all got to put in work. We, we all have had work at some point. We've all had employment of some kind. So this, is, this part's very easily relatable and it's gonna be quick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on these, piece, these three pieces of the bridge, all right? So here's the three very important actual steps to this bridge. Number two is work more effectively. So let me tell you a quick story, uh, two stories actually. Many of you may or may not know, but uh, a few years ago, i say a few years ago, wow, no way it's been eight years. <laughs> okay, so a long time ago, I used to work for an insurance company. Uh, I'll say the name, Nationwide Insurance. They're a great company. I actually really liked working for them a lot. Um, I worked at what was called the Diminishment of Value Department. So what I did is I took the value of a really high-end vehicle after it got in an accident, and I calculated its value post repairs and sent a check to the policyholder. Right, that's pretty much what I did. So what I was thinking to myself is I walked up to my boss and I said, "Hey boss, I have a quick question." Her name is Angie, by the way. If you're watching this, Angie, you totally rock. Not Angie Barbosa, another Angie, <laughs> Angela. So anyway, she's amazing. I love her. Um, so I walked up to her and I said, "Hey Angie," and again, you can ask her. This is a true conversation. It actually happened. I was like, "Hey, here's the deal." So I only have a certain amount of tasks I need to get done, right? She's like, yeah. I'm like, well, could I just get them done in like three hours and leave? She's like, well, what do you, what do you mean? I was like, well, if I came in and got everything that I need to get done quicker than everybody else, cheaper than everybody else, with less hassle to you, spending less resources at work, and I got everything done faster before you need it, before you even asked it to be done, it was finished, could I just come and go as I please? You guys know what she said? Well, you know, yeah, if you get all of your work done, sure. And I did. So here's what I did. I came into work, and what a lot of people, when they come into work, what they do is they sit down, and then they check their email, they check voicemails a little bit. Now, not everybody. I'm saying, you know, you know, you know who you are. Right? You sit down, you, you pitter-patter around. And before you know it, like 30 minutes has gone by. Work more effectively. What that means is you carve out a schedule, and you go. Like you attack this thing like a hungry rabid animal. I worked for four hours a day nonstop. I didn't have water. I didn't go to the bathroom. I didn't eat. I put on music on my headphones. And I did this. <laughs> boom, boom. Writing checks. Bam. Here it goes. Email. I had a little system for my eat for my for my envelopes. So my envelopes were already stacked, so I could just slide a check in there or a denial letter. <laughs> Insurance companies. <laughs> Seriously though, I would just slide it in the in the email. And then I already had a thing that automatically like sealed it. So it was efficient. It was quick. It was effective. If you can work more effective at work, what happens? The time that you spend on work goes down. Production goes up. The amount of things, that, the amount of time that you have to do other things increases. Another example of this and actually what inspired me, have you guys seen the, the movie The Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith? I've been too if you've seen that movie. You remember when he said that he didn't even hang up the phone. He just pressed the hang up button. He didn't drink water, so he didn't have to go to the bathroom. In fact, when he was making cold calls, he didn't even talk to the plebeians. I, th I forget the term he used, but he said he wanted to go after the big fish, the whales. So he went all the way down to the bottom of the list because he's like, hey, if I can close $1 million account, it's better than closing a $1 million accounts. So work more effectively. That's the goal. Find ways. There could be apps that you can build. There can be Excel spreadsheets that you can create. There can be systems, methodologies. I can guarantee 80% of you or more who work right now, there are ways, I can, I can assure you, to cut out at least two hours of your day from working, from the, from the monotony, and carve it down to just pure, hardcore work. And then once you get everything done, all of your tasks are finished, ask your boss, can I just go home? You're, you're paying your salary anyway. So they're going to pay if you work 70 hours a week or if you work 30 hours a week. If your work gets done, it gets, work, it gets done effectively. They're gonna let you go, or not let you go in a fire way. <laughs> uh, maybe they will. Who knows? <laughs> so I'm gonna let Brad actually take uh, take care of this one. Asking for a raise. All right. So at this point of the game, you've gotten your certifications, you've taken your trainings, you have built up your qualifications, you have you're working more effectively, you're getting a lot more done. Now's the time is uh, to go and ask for a raise. What's the worst that can happen? Right? They can say no. Now, when you go and ask for that raise, uh, I'm just going to give a little tidbit here. Uh, don't start the conversation talking about your problems. Don't start talking and say, hey, you know what, there's a big vacation that we took last year and we haven't really gotten paid off, so you need to pay me more money because I went on a vacation. You guys can understand that that probably won't come off so good. 
But talk about your performance. Talk about, look, I've gotten these certifications. I've taken these trainings. I've been performing well. I've been performing even better. And look at all these numbers that I've got. Uh, I, you know, may I have a raise for this uh, performance increase that I have experienced or, or that I've produced for you for the last three or six months. Uh, and if you bring in numbers, if you bring in specifics, you'll have a much better chance of getting that raise. Uh, there was a time when I worked for a computer company that rhymes with hell. And I had a job and I had about 13 different peers scattered throughout the, com uh, the company. And I guess actually they were They're scattered awesome. about the world. At any rate, I had about 13 peers uh, and all of them were either one or two levels higher than I was and they were full time. I was only part time. So I was doing this job that all of they that all of them uh, yes all that all of them were doing, and uh, I was also teaching classes because you guys know I love to teach classes. Well, at the end of the year, I had outperformed every single one of them. So I went to my boss and said, "Hey, look, I'm part time, and um, I, I'm part time, and I'm a low, lower level than all these folks, and I produce better. May I have a promotion? I got it. Woohoo! So um, again, it doesn't hurt to ask, and if you uh, and if you show the numbers, if you get them, you're likely to get it. Now, what happens if they say no? There's a great TED talk about rejection. Uh, and there's a, a person that was, uh, he was terrified of rejection. So he went on this uh, purposely get rejected 100 times. I think it was in three months. But it was mm -hmm. wonderful what he learned because, it, you know, th the first time he went and he asked for something ridiculous, the person did not say yes. And he turned around and he ran. And he, thought about it later like you know what they said why do you want the money they didn't say no so again when you go and you ask for that raise if your boss says no say why or better yet say okay I understand what do I need to do in order to accomplish what the company needs or your business needs so that I can earn a raise uh, and you want to get numbers get specifics um, you've probably heard us talk about smart goals get ideas get actionable things that are specific measurable uh, achievable, relevant, and time bound. And then here's the key, after the meeting, send a note, send an email to the person you have the discussion with, say, look, hey, here's what I remember from our meeting, that if I do this, and if I move this, uh, if I close this many more accounts, or if I increase my processing time, or I guess decrease your processing time, whatever, improve my processing time from this to that by this date, and, and if I accomplish these things, then that will uh, have increased my value to the company and I will have earned a raise. Uh, get that in, uh, basically what you're doing is you're documenting and hopefully you get your boss's approval. Yes or no? All right, awesome. Um, and then if, if all that doesn't work, it's free to look outside the company. Um, you know, and if you do get an offer or if you do, uh, if you can go to your boss and say, look, all of these people that do what I do at other companies, this is what they're getting paid and this is what I'm getting paid. Um, you know, can we do something to close the gap? And be ready to leave. You know, think about it. If you have done step one and you've increased your certifications and you have, uh, you know, increased your trainings and you've gotten more knowledge and you're more productive and you're creating more value and the company's not going to pay you for that, be ready to leave. Uh, I've talked to a lot of, uh, first of all, let me tell you, I was born in 74 and I entered the workforce in 1998. And I encountered a lot of people that have this feeling that, you know what, this is the, the job that I took straight out of high school or straight out of college, and I will be here till I retire, and I owe my loyalty to the company. Well, if you, if you remember what the uh, economy was doing in 2000 and 2001, and then again in 2007, 2008, there were people getting laid off right and left. Um, and fortunately, whenever tough times hit a, a, a company, whenever they need to cut their bottom line, they are not loyal to you. So while I admire loyalty, be sure it's properly placed. I would say be loyal to yourself, be loyal to your family, be loyal to your needs first. Um, because you know why we have to give two weeks notice? Because uh, you can be replaced in two weeks by the company. So. Um, don't be afraid to ask for the raise. The worst that can happen is that they say no. Jeremy, what's next? Tag team. Tag Back team. Again. Oh, Back wait. again. <laughs> number four. Uh, number four. So is charge more. This is actually more for potentially either my traders who or my traders, my people, my people who are watching. Uh, if you're a self-employed 1099 contractor, independent contractor, or you work um, on an hourly basis where you can charge 
more uh, or is very flexible. Um, Todd Toba Beta said value is more expensive than price. So it's all about what you're receiving, right? Uh, so here's the deal. If you charge more, there's a story that my dad taught me that always stuck me for a very, very long time. And the story was uh, that my dad was actually in photography for a while and he knew a guy who did uh, picture frames. And he made picture frames handcrafted out of uh, a really nice cedar wood and like did like wood staining and they're really nice picture frames. So anyway, he sold those picture frames for like $35 a piece in, oh geez, I think it was like 1980 or something when, you know, when uh, Kodak and everything was really big. So he sold these picture frames for a while. And then he became popular. Everyone in the film industry and the photography industry started buying more and more and more. And he was just working his butt off. So he said, you know what? Like, man, I'm just going to charge 100 bucks for these because, I, I mean, the demand is more than the supply. Any guess what happened, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Crazy as it sounds, his orders and business went up. People started demanding more of these picture frames because they thought it, it was more of a value. So he raised the price again and then again, and eventually it was like $1,000 for one picture frame. So here's the math behind it. Originally, he was doing like 100 frames a month and only making $3,500. At the end of the whole thing, he was only doing um, 10 a month rather than 100, and he was making a lot more money. It's interesting that that's the case, but right, value is more expensive than price. So the deal is, whatever you're charging, it's very difficult to just out the gate charge more. If this is the first time you've ever done anything ever, you're like, okay, this is the first time I'm ever walking dogs, so to speak. I'm gonna charge 49 grand per day. At some point, price is inelastic, right? If you charge too much, people won't, you know, people won't purchase it. So like if you're trying to buy a Bugatti Veyron and it's $14 million, right? $14 million for one vehicle, it's kind of pricey. So we're all not gonna be purchasing that vehicle, but they don't want that. They want one or two people like Kobe Bryant and Tom Cruise to buy the Bugatti Veyron. So the deal is higher value, um, higher price often is attributed to higher value. So this is an interesting thing. This might sound like a sales pitch, but it's not. So a lot of you do know that I, I also have private coaching uh, that I work one-on-one -on -one with some traders. A few of you here have worked with me directly. Type in one if you are here. I know I see Jason Smith and Troy uh, Garanga. We work together. So I do have uh, coaching that I work directly with traders. I give them a lot of homework. I give them a lot of follow-up. I give them a lot of goals. I give them a lot of, I, I mean, I put a lot of time into this. And I do also business consulting for other startups, other IPOs, tech, uh, usually or sales. I do a lot of business consulting for sales and leadership councils. Uh, I also help and manage, uh, I don't manage, I apologize. I help consult with um, other companies who do manage money. There's a uh, hedge fund out in California that I work with uh, in the past and I charge an hourly rate for that. So my coaching hourly rate for students for a very, very long time has been $200 per session. Now the sessions are recorded. I work directly with that person. So here's the deal. I'm going to show you how easy this is to simply charge more. I don't know if this is a good idea or a bad idea, but that's the thing, right? You're always afraid to charge more because you're like, if I charge more, I'm going to get less work. That may or may not be true, but regardless, at some point, you got to start charging more. Even if that means that the quantity goes down, the quality will go up. So here's the deal. I'm actually going to do it for you. I'm going to show you how simple this is. Promise is not a sales pitch. We're going to have another slide right after this. I'm gonna increase my coaching rate starting March the 1st. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna double it. I'm gonna make it from 200 a session to 400 a session, and I might not get any students at all. I understand that, it's absolutely understandable. But those students who I do get, they're gonna put in a lot of time, they're gonna work really hard, and they're gonna do all the homework of that I can be assured. So starting March 1st, I'm gonna be doubling my rate. If you wanna get in at the rate that I have now, email me, jeremy at reallifetrain.com. You can lock it in. If your session is after March 1st, I can still lock this in for you, right? But email me before March 1st, you'll lock it in after March 1st, it's done, it's over with. That's it, it's not a sales pitch, I promise. Just let you know, that's how easy it is, right? So if you're a lawyer, or if you're someone who can bill by the hour, charge more, you'll make more money. <laughs> that simple. So I'm gonna let Brad show you the overall ladder at its entirety. So once again, we're talking about increasing your value, right? So you can increase your value by getting additional licenses, certifications, take more trainings. Jason, thank you for that awesome contribution. 
and work more effectively, create more value, then you have to take it a step further to cross that bridge. You have to ask for it, whether that's asking for a raise uh, from your boss or asking for a raise from your clients, right? Charge more. But if you do all these things, you will get to success. Now, a lot of this has been talking about creating your value at work. Um, profit, there's a proverb that says that profit is a measure of success. So we've been talking about increasing your value. We've been talking about increasing your value at work, but what about increasing value in your community? If you can increase your value in your community, you can get paid and you can get paid more money and that's what this webinar is all about, is how to get paid more. So uh, next we're gonna focus on how to create, uh, or how to increase your personal value. Nice, absolutely. All right guys, so here's the deal. Right, we've been talking about how can I become more valuable. That's the theme so far for tonight. How can I become more valuable? That is the question that I want you all to start asking yourself every day. How can I become more valuable? How can I become more valuable? Not how much more money you can make. How can you become more valuable? If you become more valuable, you will make more money. All right. So now we're going to give actionable steps. So that was work, but really we all want to quit our jobs. Can we be honest? We all want to work ourselves travel anywhere we want to travel at any day of the week we all want to do what we want to do when we want to do it we want freedom i get that so here are going to be four steps to improve yourself if you do these four steps you will be making more money i know that's a crazy guarantee but you're gonna to have to trust me on this one i'm gonna cover two and then brad's gonna cover two read more books i'm gonna have some statistics for you in just a moment Daniel Alley, who also did a TED Talk. Um, by the way, that's a great TED Talk that you mentioned, the rejection one. That's so phenomenal. If you guys get a chance, make sure to, uh, to check that one out. Type in rejection TED Talk. It's very, very good. Read more books, my friends. If you want to lead, you must read. And if you want to succeed, you must read. <laughs> read more books. If you want to make more money, ask yourself, how many books did you read? last year give me a number you don't have to write it down it's okay my number was low and I don't like it I wanted to go up read more books this is a very strong correlation read more books you will make more money Bill Gates reads or is said to have read or is claimed to have read two books per day Tony Robbins reads a book a week Les Brown reads 30 pages per day if you read more you will make more ladies and gentlemen Right? So Fred mentioned, I read about five books a month. Fred mentioned earlier that he's debt free, has seven streams of income. <laughs> think about that, guys. Seven streams of passive income reads about five books a month. You think it's a correlation of any kind? Right? There's a correlation here. So, number two is ask better questions. This one is hard. This is a mental challenge, but if you do this, also, you will make more money. This is an actionable thing that you can do starting tonight. Starting tonight, you can do this. So when I say ask better questions, it's a really a lifelong pursuit for us as humans, something we should strive after daily. So what I mean by that is, like an example, how can I make more money? We could ask the question, how can I become more valuable? Some other questions is, uh, there's another question of how can I save more money? That's a question, right? How can I save more money? Better question could be, how can I spend less money? An even better question could be, how can I make budgeting a top priority in my life? That's a whole other question, right? That's like the question. So the quality of our life is dictated by the quality of questions that we ask. If you ask, why did this happen to me? Why did I lose on this trade? Why am I broke? Those are basic, bottom line, emotional responses. These are normal questions that everybody asks. If you want normal, you cannot ask normal questions. Now, it's gonna pop in your head, right? Why am I tired? Why is my bank account so low? Why can I not afford this? These are things that are gonna pop in your head immediately. The goal is once those pop in your head, you want to say, you know what? There's a better question out there. Let me think about this question and see if I can come up with a better one. And when you come up with a better question, you'll get better answers. And with better answers, better quality of life. There are some people who have done what you wanna do and they will help you understand and know what questions to ask. And that's what a mentor is about. And one of my mentors, Brad Reed, will be talking about that right now. Yeah, finding a mentor is very, very important if you want to do something, right? If you want to go somewhere, if you want to, 
uh, achieve something that you've never done before. Instead of finding your way through the jungle or desert or climbing the mountains or whatever my analogy here is going, why not find someone who's already blazed the trail? Find someone who's already been there and done it and ask them how they did it. I know a lot of successful people and it pains them to see so many people who are poor in the world and so many people are struggling and they want to. They would love to help someone. But it's not going to be, and of course Jeremy just talked about asking better questions. If you see someone getting out of a nice car wearing nice clothes, don't go up and say, hey man, uh, that's pretty awesome. How, how'd you do all that? Right? Find someone who's successful, especially if they're successful in a direction or career or family or spiritual or health or fitness or, you know, they're successful at something specifically that you want to do, you know, find a time and ask them earnestly and say, hi, you know, my name is Brad Reed. You appear to be, ha you know, you, it looks like you've achieved great success in this field and I want to do that too. I'm working hard. I'm struggling how to do it. Would you find some time to sit down and mentor me on how to do that? And I guarantee you that so many of these people would love to would love to find the time to help you. And if not, you know, offer to pay for it. Offer to pay for the coaching. Offer to pay for the mentorship. Maybe that means buy them a beer. Maybe that means buy them lunch. Maybe there maybe there's a fee for it. But I guarantee you that you will save time and energy if you can find someone who has already blazed that path that you want to follow than if you're gonna go struggling through and, and try and find it all together. No one liked my, my thing about earnestly. I mean, we're talking about earning more money. <laughs> and I said earnestly, man, okay. Um, bad jokes, yeah, I know, that's me. All right, uh, the bottom one there, spend time with better people, folks. Uh, birds of a feather flock together, right? If you see uh, your kids hanging out with um, undesirable people, um, and I'm not going to make that political uh, correlation. But if, if you see your pe if you see your kids uh, start to spend time with folks that you know may not reflect your values, you get concerned. Why not? You know, or why do you get concerned? Because people tend to uh, react and act and reflect the values of the people that you surround yourself with. So if you don't want your your kids uh, being with people that do not reflect your value, then do that for yourself too. Be sure that you are surrounding yourself. Uh, with people that reflect your values. So spend time with better people. Um, one of the best blessings that I have in, in my life is I get to spend time on the trading floor. I'm the dumbest person in that trading floor, and you guys know this. I'm on the mic, so I just get to repeat what all of you folks say, and I sound smart. Folks, I want to be the dumbest person in the room because that means the only direction that I can go is up. So surround yourself with people who are smarter than you, and then you can absorb that, uh, that smartness. Now, if you're like uh, Troy Beinhart, if you're like Fred, if you're like Niels Christensen, and you're the smartest person um, in a couple of hundred miles, there's Pat Kaufman, uh, Pat qualifies as well, then you know maybe you need to read books that are written by smart people. But the whole point is, is that there are steps to improve ourselves. These are four great ways to do it. Um, read books, very important. <laughs> yes. Yes, great segue, great segue. Fred, you're totally right. He says you're the average of your five friends. Pick wisely. Uh, Tony Robbins says proximity is power. So the people that you're around, if you're around a bunch of poor people, guess what? You're probably pretty poor. Or or they're going to be holding you back from your potential potential. Your potential potential? Yeah, just said that. That just happened. All right, so let me give you some scary statistics, if you don't mind, on reading. I want some of these to scare you, if you don't mind. This is according to Pew Research which uh, I don't know who works there. I don't know how they calculate this, but here they go. Here's some, here's some statistics. 33%, that is the percentage of total high school graduates who will never read a book after high school, which means if all of you have graduated high school, those of you watching, mathematically, one out of every three of you will never read a book again until, of course, after each this. Uh, go through this webinar. Now, most of you here are a little bit of a different breed of people, let's be honest. Right now, live, it's Thursday night at 8.40 Eastern. You're a different breed of human. You're hungry. You want this. You're going to obtain this. But the deal is, there are a lot of people uh, who don't, who don't want to put in the kind of work. Now, here's a scary statistic. 50% of adults cannot read a book written at an 8th grade level. 50% of adults cannot read at a book written at an 8th grade level. It's either me or Brad. 
<laughs> Mathematically, right? I'm still trying to read the screen. Fred says, just read something. I think that's the point. Yeah, exactly. 20% of Americans read below the level they need to earn a living wage. 44% of Americans do not read a book in a year. Ladies and gentlemen, do not read a book in a year. So read more, grow more, make more money. Uh, Dimitri asks a list of books. Yes, uh, I will copy. Let me see if I can copy this. Can I copy this? Now let me come out of here. I do have a list of books that I uh, created. Uh, these are just a few off the top of my head. I'll put in the chat pane if I can. There we go. Uh, so for those of you who can't get that chat pane, uh, Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins, Launch by Jeff Walker, The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, Seller Be Sold by Grant Cardone, Richest Man in Babylon, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, and of course Start With Why by Simon Sinek. All solid books. Uh, if you have any others that you want to post, feel free to post them in the comment section below if you're watching on YouTube or let me know some other books I might not have read. Those are not all the books I've read, but you get the idea. So it's all about learning more. Read more, learn more, grow more, ask better questions, and have a mentor help you. So we're almost finished. This will probably be the, the part that we're going to spend the most time on. There are other quite simplistic ways to earn money, some very actionable steps that you can take right now. So if you have a TV or a computer in your home, you have the time to do everything that you say you do not have the time for. So if you say in your mind, I don't really have the time for that, and you have a TV or a computer in your house, guess what? You do have the time for it, trust me, right? A lot of the coaching sessions that I do, what I'm doing is I'm actually looking at their schedule if, if time management is something they need help with, and I'm going through, and I'm like, give me 24 hours of your day. I haven't yet to find a schedule that I can carve out two hours a week for that one person to work on self-improvement. Can't find one schedule. I've never had anyone who can't give me two hours a week to do something to earn more money or to grow themselves in some way. So here's the biggest, biggest deal, and I want a little bit of participation in this one. Here we go. Use your skills. Use your skills. What are you good at? Think deeply in this one. Think really deep. What are you good at? Go ahead and start writing in. What is one thing that you're really good at? You guys know one thing that I was really good at that I found out? Public speaking. I found out that I was actually pretty okay at public speaking. So I was able to use that to work for a company uh, that put me on a pedestal that I was able to publicly speak that helped me grow my career. A few other things. I'm actually pretty good at selling things. So I consult with other companies and help their sales teams sell better, right? So even though I don't sell anything, uh, right, all the real life training stuff is totally for free, I can. I'm a really good salesperson, so I, I know how to do it, actually. Uh, so use your skills. If you speak another language, you right now are sitting on a stack of cash that you couldn't burn fast enough, right? If you can speak another language, it doesn't matter if it's Spanish, Portuguese, Mandarin, uh, Punjabi, Urdu, German, Italian, doesn't matter, okay? There are so many opportunities for you. If you speak another language, it's insane, okay? If you're really good at math, grammar, editing, oh my gosh, if you can edit something, if you, oh, I'm terrible at that. That's not a skill that I have. But if you can edit, here's three websites that if you do not have in your repertoire, add them, okay? Freelance.com, Odesk.com, Fiverr.com, those are all three websites that I do subscribe to that I sell my services, sell things that I'm good at, which it's not a lot, but I sell things that I'm good at and I get paid for them. Now, again, it's not an insane amount of money, but it will be if that's your priority. If you're like, I'm gonna live on this and make money, Odesk.com, I have personally seen two trading uh, coaching students of mine go to Odesk.com and speak another language and make upwards of $1,000 extra a month just from translating a website or translating an article or being a phone translator, right? You can write blog posts for lawyers, like Garanga said. You can do Excel spreadsheets. Anything that you think you're good at, you can probably get paid to do. Think outside the box. Ask a better question, right? Uber or Lyft. Let's say that you have a car and you know your city really well and you like driving. You can drive listen to audiobooks, be a 1099 employee, write off your car, write off your mileage, write off your taxes, write off your repairs. There's a lot that you can do with Uber and Lyft. I know a lot of people use Uber and Lyft. Some people do, some people don't. 
If you don't want to, that's okay. I understand there's risks and rewards with everything, right? But Uber and Lyft, I know people who use that as a way to make additional money. eBay, huge resource. eBay, Amazon, e-commerce. There's a lot of companies out there about e-commerce uh, that you can literally, it's called drop shipping, where you pay in bulk for a bunch of things and they go on eBay and you sell them like phones or knee braces or hats or scarves or shoes or whatever. Now, I know that that's gonna be a clutter inventory type of thing. It's totally up to you. What do you wanna do, right? But you can also find items that you like. Maybe you know a lot about cars. I know a guy on YouTube, which doesn't mean anything. I know a guy on YouTube. I've seen a YouTube channel where a guy buys cars on Craigslist, fixes them up, and then sell them. That's what he does. That's it. You know why? Because he's a really good mechanic and he loves cars. Find something that you're good at and you'll know it immediately. You have to, everyone's good at something. If you say, Jeremy, I'm not really good at anything, there's something that you're good at. If you say, well, Jeremy, I'm lazy. I just like to sit around and watch movies. I like watching movies too. I love movies. You know what? If I could figure out a way to, oh, I don't know, start a YouTube channel and make really funny videos about the movies that I'm watching, I'd probably make a pretty good amount of money. Weird, there's actually a lot of people who already do that. They are literally movie nuts and they review books or movies on YouTube and they get paid to do it because their loot, their YouTube channel grows so popular, right? They can sell ad space and things like that. So yeah, if you want to read, um, if you want to read books and review them for money or watch movies and write reviews and blogs, if it's funny, if it has value, people will use that. I know that sounds crazy, but you got to think, what are your skills? Okay? If you're truly someone who's like, hey, I'm lazy. This is what I want to do. If you're lazy, well, number one, there's a small chance that you might not ever make as much money as you want, but regardless, you can use that skill to do things. Maybe you're a painter and you can sell your paintings on eBay. Maybe you do watercolor. Maybe you do crocheting. Maybe you knit. Whatever it is. All right? Third, another thing, Etsy. We've all heard of Etsy. Um, I had one of my brothers, I said one of my, I have three brothers, Gary, uh, he creates welding and he does uh, big boy tricycles. Uh, he sold two on Etsy, so it was like tricycles for grown adults, so he weld them, painted them, and sold them on Etsy for about 1400 bucks each. He told me that it couldn't be done, I said I challenged him to do it, he did it, and for my brother that's a lot of money. And on Etsy, if you are crafty, my goodness. The Guys, for, for Christmas last year, I bought a soap dispenser made from a Crown Royal bottle because one, uh, one of my relatives loved Crown, Crown Royal, the Canadian whiskey. And it was all it was was a Crown Royal bottle with a soap dispenser on, on, on top of it. That was it. And I bought each one. I bought two of them for like 50 bucks. So here's what that person did. <laughs> they bought Crown. They probably drank it. They turned it into a soap dispenser, then they sold it, and they, they pretty much drank alcohol for free. That's pretty much what happened. I was like, man, that's smart. You know, I'm not crafty. I'm not going to person do that. Or another thing, obviously, you can sell things that you don't need or use. Ladies and gentlemen, the ideas are bountiful and plentiful. If you coach with me long enough, uh, and again, I promise this is not a webinar about me coaching, but that's just another way that I do make money. I'm not coaching. Let's say, say this. For my business people out there, the consulting that I do what a lot of times is I'll tell their sales associates or even their employees other things and other skills that they didn't know that they had, right? So here, here's some, here's an example of one of the things I did for a company not too long ago, one of my friend's companies. He has a group of salesmen that he hired and uh, each salesman had the opportunity to niche themselves in a specific market. So think about that. If you're looking at a bunch of different sales associates and you have five sales associates, I was like, you know what? This person's personality would mesh really well with doctors and lawyers. And this person's personality would mesh really well with the agricultural people, with farmers, with people who do heavy machinery. Because some people have different personalities, right? Some people like me, some people like Brad, some people hate us both and prefer other people. Hey, it's cool, right? Personalities are a big point of who we are, obviously. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so, <coughs> so we all have skills. We all have certain things that we are going to be really, really good at. So all I'm saying is I always challenge my coaching students at some point once we get to a level of whatever it is that we're working on. If it's trading or if it's business or if it's sales or if it's marketing or if it's advertising or if it's managing money, whatever it might be. 
I always challenge them, okay, we got this, done, done, done. What's the next thing? What's the next thing that we're doing? What are we creating next? And we always come up with goals at some level to continue and to progress. So, uh, Brad is going to give you a few more ideas. I hope you guys are writing this down because these are all ways that you can make additional money. If you want to make additional money, start doing these things right now. Okay, Jeremy, you've got a problem. Because you said a few more. I got a bunch. Um, you know, the last one on the screen here is sell things you don't need or use. Uh, I cleaned out the basement, made $5,000. Uh, sold all of my uh, keyboards, equipment, and speakers because I thought one day it'll be fun to play in bands again. But am I going to get back into playing with bands with 10, 15, 20-year-old equipment? Yeah. So I sold it to a, a young musician who needs it. And actually ended up getting a job performing in Vegas. So, woohoo, good for him. I also sold my skydiving gear because it was just getting old and I'm probably not gonna jump out of planes anymore. At any rate, um, other ways to make money. Anyone ever heard someone say a penny saved is a penny earned? You know, type in a Y if you've heard anyone say a penny saved is a penny earned. Folks, if you can do a budget, it will help you save money. Uh, and uh, Rima says, I do, I do, awesome. Yes, the first time I did a budget, I discovered that my wife and I were spending over $800 eating out every month. We save some money that way. And I think I remember Jeremy Newsom talking about, the, uh, he did a budget once and he found out just how much money he was spending at movie theaters. But I won't go into his personal detail. Um, Jeremy was talking a lot about what do you love to do, what are you good at? Um, some other people might say, want to look at what are you called to do and I would encourage all of you folks to take some time reflect pray meditate whatever you call it when you go inside yourself or or you go outside yourself however you do it but discover what it is that you're meant to do Mark Twain has a quote that says make your vacation your vocation and you won't work another day in your life so when you find that thing that you love to do it won't be that stressful uh, painstaking time at work uh, if you don't like what you're currently doing. Um, who here likes to go on vacations? Type in a three if you like going on vacations. Woohoo! All right, yeah. Well, how about you go on a great vacation, you come back, you put it on Facebook, you tell your friends about it, and they say, oh man, that's awesome. I want to go on that vacation. Be like, great. Tell you what, uh, let me book you in the same hotel. Let me get your flights. Let me get you on all the excursions. Let me get you on the boats. Let me get you on the tours, the things, the, the where, the this and the that. Let me get you on all of that stuff that I did so you can have that great vacation. And look, I will plan all of it for you, but just pay me a hundred bucks and I'll get it all done just the way that we did it, right? If someone did some amazing, awesome vacation and you want to do it too, yeah, just give them a hundred bucks. They'll do all the, the legwork for you. And guess what? You're starting a travel agency. I've got a buddy that's a travel agent. He gets free vacations to the Caribbean. Yes, those resorts will pay for him to fly there. They'll give him a room. They'll pay for all his food. He vacations for free. And then he comes back and he gets paid to book them for other people. So again, find that stuff you love to do. Do you uh, Are you looking to take more steps in a day? You want to work out more? You love the outdoors? Great, mow lawns, right? Um, go around your neighborhood and say, look, I'm, I want to exercise more. Can I mow your lawn for 20 bucks? Or, hey, uh, you know what? I've gotten into debt and I'm trying to get out. Or I want to save up for uh, my wife's, uh, I'm not going to say which vacation or which birthday it is that's coming up. But I want to do, uh, take her to a great vacation in Vegas and I want to save up some money. Can I mow your lawn for 20 bucks? Or shovel snow or whatever it is. Um, but, you know, if you can just get $20 a day Walking dogs, uh, you know, Ashley was saying, hey, there's a guy down down, down the way here that, that walks dogs. Look, folks, if you can get $20 a day for five days a week, that's $100 in a week. That's $400 in a month. All of a sudden, $20 a day, that's a pretty significant amount. $400 per month, um, you can pay off a car that way, pay off your credit card. And guess what? If you're already out of debt, like some of you guys are saying, um, $400 a month invested at the stock market average of 10% a year. In 35 years, that's one and a half million dollars. So what am I saying? I'm saying if you can create $20 more per day and invest that at only 10% of year, the stock market average, in 35 years, that's one and a half million dollars for just $20 a day. Now, one other idea that I really like is uh, kind of like babysitting. But instead of going to someone's house and babysitting, 
allow them to bring their kids to your house. So now instead of just servicing one family and creating value, you can create value for five or 10 households in your neighborhood. Valentine's Day is coming up, right? And so how about uh, sending a message out to a lot of your neighbors saying, hey, are you trying to find childcare for Valentine's Day? Bring your kids over to my house, pay me $25 per kid from six until 10 o'clock. I'll watch them, I'll take care of them, and you guys go out and have a great Valentine's Day dinner. Well, how many kids do you think you're gonna get? And if you're getting 25 bucks a head, you're making buku's bucks. Now, be sure you check the legal requirements in your area because uh, there's different legal requirements in different areas and you don't want to get in trouble on the wrong side of that. But you guys get the point. You bring the kids to your house, your money per child, your, your uh, money per hour will go up significantly. Are you guys good at cooking? You like to cook? Cater for your friends' parties. When someone's having a party, just say, hey, uh, you bought all that food. Can I cook it for you and save you all that time and hassle? Uh, and you know, throw me 20 or 50 bucks. Guess what? You're getting paid to go to a party. Woohoo! Uh, throw parties for your friends. Grab their pictures off of Facebook and put them in a scrapbook for them. Make a video. Put it to music. People will pay you for this. Um, are you good at teaching? Are you good at coaching? Are you good at tutoring? Right? Brian was saying, great at math. There's kids all over this world that are bad at math and that need a tutor. Go pay for it. You got kids in college? Um, there are lots of services on campus that will buy the notes. So you go to class, you take notes like you're going to do anyway, um, and then you just turn them into the service so that they can sell those notes and you get paid. There's a lot of stuff that we're going to do anyway that people will pay for. Ashley was actually just showing me a website that if you, um, if you will give them your grocery receipt, they'll pay you money. Okay, so you, you go, you buy the groceries, you come back, you scan it, you send it to them, they will pay you money. Jason Smith uh, has got the one, ibotta.com. You're going to buy milk, they'll give you a dollar for buying that milk. You're going to buy wine or beer, um, they'll pay you money for it. So again, all these opportunities uh, to get paid for stuff that you are just flat out going to do anyway. Again, folks, find the things that you like to do. Find the things that you love to do. Talked about Victor Gonzalez. is a, He's a real life trader, an amazing artist, has lots of paintings. Um, you know, Victor's starting to put them on Facebook and sell them. Find those things that you're called to do and you will have tons of opportunities to make new money. Absolutely, guys. So again, we're going to cover a lot of things and items and topics tonight. So what are you going to do after you make the money? Well, you're going to save it, right? So you save it, you build it up. Here's some here's some interesting uh, little tip for saving more money. There's called a 52-week challenge. This is the first time I ever heard about this was at, actually at Nationwide Insurance. Um, they put me on this challenge. I was only 18. Save a dollar every week, an additional dollar the week after. So week one, you save a dollar. Week two, you save two dollars. Week three, you save three dollars, so on and so forth. So by week 52, which is a whole year, you saved up 52 weeks, uh, 52 dollars for that week. So in one year, that's thirteen hundred seventy-eight dollars. If you do that five years, that's seven thousand two hundred eighty-two bucks. Here's a scary statistic: I'm doing a live event in a few days called "The Two Hidden Dangers of Mutual Funds." I've been doing a lot of research on how much people have in savings. You know what? This seven thousand two hundred eighty-two bucks in five years that you could save is more than thirty percent of Americans have in savings right now. That's mind-boggling. Seven grand. I've lost that on a trade once, a few times. <laughs> so that's incredible, like seven grand, that's more than most people have in savings and you can do that in five years just by these simple, easy, just super simple strategies that you can use of just things that you do. So after you save the money, then what? So I'm actually gonna have Brad, we're gonna go through this and we're gonna talk about some other apps and things that you can use in about two minutes. So Brad, go ahead and wrap this up, my man. Awesome, so there's, uh, if you have paid off your debt, if you have funded your emergency fund, if you're putting enough into your retirement accounts, and if you are putting enough in your kids' college savings fund, what are you gonna do with the rest, right? Well, there's savings accounts, there's structured bank notes, um, there's mutual funds, kind of that fall on the bottom two tiers of this slide. They're all great opportunities for um, either emergency fund savings or savings that you're gonna need in, you know, say six months to two years. You're saving up for a car, a down payment on a house, you're going on vacation, um, it, you know, short-term things like that. Um, I'm going to skip Lending Club because that one is near and dear to Jeremy's heart, so he's going to come talk about that. But tax liens is is one of my favorite real estate investments that um, is on my plan to do very soon. But with the tax lien, if if uh, a household has not paid their taxes, 
the county then can put their tax liens up on a website and you can go to this website and you basically pay this family's taxes for them. It can be $600, $1,000, $2,000, maybe even $4,000. But if you pay their taxes for them up front, two things can happen. And I hate saying only two things, but there, two things will happen. Number one, they will pay their taxes plus interest and they'll pay it to the county clerk and the county clerk will then forward that money on to you. It is a government set interest rate most of the interest rates is uh, per state or per county are between 14 and 17 percent. 14 to 17 percent. And that's the, that's the one option. The other option is you get the house. Now, if you get the house, unfortunately, you do have to go through uh, the eviction process. You're going to have to get a lawyer and you're going to have to contact the sheriff. And you're going to have to go and look at a family that is struggling with money and put them out on the street. Um, that's, I, I don't have that in my heart, so the tax liens that I'm going to look for are going to have a mortgage on them. Because you can imagine a mortgage company is not going to allow that house to be lost uh, just for a couple of hundred bucks. But again, check out tax liens on your county website. Uh, learn about it before you get into it, just like any investment, just like any trade. But yeah, the idea is you can put up 600 to uh, a few thousand dollars. You get 14 to 17% or you get the house. And then, of course, a lot of folks here know about the stock market. The stock market averages 10% of year. Um, a lot of you folks understand our R system. And if you don't understand our R system, if you don't know how to trade the market, go to www.reallifetrading.com. There is a ton of free education on how to trade. But uh, you guys have heard me say it, 3 to 4 R per year. Uh, sorry, 3 to 4 R per month. If your R is about 2% of your account, that will double your account in a year. And a lot of you that have experience trading know that, hey, three to four R a month, um, yeah, that's not that hard. You know, a lot of you folks can be up some and then you're down some because maybe you take too many trades. Like I know I've done, not been that disciplined. But yeah, three to four R a month, you can double your account in a, in a year. And hey, if you only get one or two R, you only get half that. It's still very, very valuable. Jeremy, Lending Club. So Lending Club, you guys have probably all heard of the company. This is actually also a publicly traded company, ticker symbol LC. And uh, my good buddy um, uh, Fred mentioned just earlier that he also uses this, ticker symbol LC Lending Club. It's a peer-to-peer -peer lending service. So think about it like this, ladies and gentlemen. If people uh, get money from someone other than a bank, who do they get money from? Well, either a loan shark or a company like One Main Financial or Lending Club. These uh, these companies lend out money to people for personal things. So it's not a mortgage, it's, it could be a car loan. Um, sometimes it can be people with bad credit or sometimes it's just people who don't wanna to go to a bank for whatever particular reason. But I do use Lending Club. I love the stock and I love the, the service. You're talking about somewhere between conservatively, right Fred? Am I right on this? About four to 8% a year. So what you're doing is you're putting money into this account you're building a portfolio of what kind of risk and what kind of tolerance and what kind of people that you're okay to loan out to. And they loan in micro lots to people. So usually it's in 25 to $100 increments. Um, so you have like a thousand $25 loans out there, micro loans. And these micro loans from the thousands and thousands of people build up one big loan that they give to Sally. And if Sally pays that loan back, they pay, she pays it back obviously with a lot of interest. That interest, Lending Club takes that interest and pays you a portion depending on how that loan is structured. Somewhere between four to 8% a year. Ladies and gentlemen, and this is free to do. It's free to create. Uh, for instance, I think Prosper is the other American company uh, for peer-to-peer. -peer. Mature average is 7.5% for me. So this is just another way that you can make money. Now, again, think about this. All of this is gonna take time and all of these things are gonna be taking work. Nothing in life is going to be given to you if it's worth having. If it is given to you, like the, stock, uh, like, like the lottery, they literally made a TV show about how people lost all their money after winning the lottery because they were not ready to handle that kind of money. So these are all things that you can do after you save your money, after you build up some cash, if you want to do something with it, have that money work for you. Warren Buffett and many other people across the world have said, you're not going to be truly wealthy until you can make money while you are sleeping. That's a great question to ask. If you ask the question, how can I become more valuable and how can I make money while I'm sleeping or while I'm traveling or while I'm doing something that I really want to do, 
you're going to start coming up with answers and you're going to have to start doing those things. So the interesting thing is we were already kind of talking about this. Um, so this is going to be our last slide of the night. Well, technically, technically our last slide of the night. But here's some other great apps and websites that you can use to earn additional monies. So you can make more monies. I want to make that money with these websites and these applications. So let's just go through a few of these. Um, the top left-hand side, this is Acorns. Uh, Acorns, Loyal3, Stash.com, and Folio. I would suggest these uh, are going to be for people who have no savings or are young. Okay, If you're young and you have no savings, these are for you. What this does are these are applications that automatically take micro cents from your account and deposit it into an account, into a fund that's invested in the stock market. I did use Acorns last year during kids month because I had a few kids that were like, hey, how do you want to invest in the market? Kids can invest in the market using Acorns. Um, if they have an account that's linked to your parents' account or your credit card, what it will do is if you take a purchase, let's say your purchase is $4.37, it'll round it up to five bucks. So. 63 cents? Yeah. 63 cents. It'll take that 63 cents and it'll put it into the fund. So over like three months, I grew an account of 375 bucks with Acorns. And then it got 2% interest because I was in, I was putting it into some kind of a real estate fund. <laughs> so, hey, if you have little savings, no savings, or you're young, this is a great way to take micro pennies and just deposit into it without even thinking it. Because again, if you can't afford five bucks or 17 cents, you're doing something wrong. You gotta reevaluate your, re your life for sure. Uh, here's some ways we talked about budgeting. Mint.com, Wally, and Budget. These are all websites and applications that will help you along with your budgeting. They will help you keep track of, they will send you alerts, they'll send you reminders, they'll send you like, hey, are you sure you wanna buy that? Cause you're going over budget. Uh, those are some really, really good applications. We mentioned these, uh, these earlier. Iboda and FOAP, these are sites that literally will pay you because let me show you how they make money. One of the ways they make money is they are partnered with other marketing and demographic research companies. So they're taking your data and they're selling it to people. I get that, right? Facebook does the same thing. Google does the same thing and you're not going to ban them. So Iboda and FOAP, uh, you're taking pictures of your receipts, you're uploading them, you're giving cash back for the things you're already purchasing. Buzz Agent, type in a one if you've never heard of Buzz Agent before. So Buzz Agent is a company that literally will send you products for free and you can review them, write up a survey, write in how they are, and then you will get paid money to promote them. If you have a website, if you have a company, if you have a big following, if you have a Twitter, if you have a LinkedIn, if you have a Facebook, if, like, if they send you a, um, a certain kind of jelly, and you're like, oh, I love this jelly. It was really good. I put it on my toes. It smeared great. It tasted good. There wasn't a lot of seeds. It wasn't too sweet, so on and so forth. I think all of you guys should use this jelly. They're going to be paying you. They'll actually send you products for free. It's a really pretty cool website, buzzagent.com. Pretty sweet. Uh, here's another one. We mentioned freelance.com, Fiverr, Odesk, guru.com is another one. If you think you're a guru, if you think you're really good at something, go to guru.com, find your specialty, get paid for your specialty. A great website, and again, this is kind of more towards this demographic. If you have no savings or very, very little savings or you're younger, but you guys can all check it out. It's a website called thepennyhoarder.com. They give out very frequent blogs very often about really cool, easy, simple tricks that you can use to make a little bit additional income. I'm not talking about massive amounts of money, but they're like, hey, here's how you make an additional 50 bucks a month doing stuff that you're already doing anyway. So thepennyhoarder.com, really, really cool website. Um, and in using that, they've actually told me about a way that you can uh, use Bing as your main research tool. So, so instead of Google, you Bing everything. So I know no one here Bings. But if you did, Microsoft will actually pay you to use Bing as your main search engine. Not a lot, okay? You're not going to get a million dollars a day to use Bing, but they will pay you. They will give you things to search. They will give you videos to click on. They will give you very specific instructions, and while you're surfing the internet anyway, you can get paid. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the deal. There are countless opportunities to make more money. The biggest takeaway from tonight is simply how we can become more valuable as people, and then take the steps, take the actions, put in the work, and do what you need to do to achieve 
the things that you're willing to achieve. In March, during Kids Month, one of the other uh, one of the other uh, videos I'm going to be doing for the kids is going to be called "How to Get What You Want," right? How to achieve the dreams that you want to achieve. Last year, I said, "Hey, find someone who's doing it and then go do that." This year, it's going to be a similar message, but a different aspect, a different take on that. The thing is, everything that you think is achievable is. It might not be that big dream. Like if you want to buy a Corvette in cash right now, if that's your dream, if that's your goal, you might not be able to do that right now. But find ways to drive that Corvette for free. Is there any way that you could possibly drive a Corvette for free? Is that impossible? You could just go to a Chevrolet dealer and do a test drive. <laughs> I mean, it's free. You're going to get in the Corvette and you're going to get a chance to feel what it feels like behind that wheel and one of two things will happen. You'll go, oh cool, that was really fun. I like that. But you know what? I actually don't want to buy one. I think that was just a pipe dream. Or you go, yeah, I like this. And what your brain is going to do is your brain's going to make sure to find ways that you are going to achieve that. So if you have this big, insane dream of traveling and taking exotic trips every single month, doing what you want to do, sipping on a, mar a Mai Tai at the beach while you're making just countless money not doing anything. If that's your dream, if that's what you want to do, if your dream is to travel around the world, then start traveling in your backyard or in a city five hours south of you. How many people of you have just picked up a car, not a car, gotten in your car and driven five hours south with no plan, no idea of what to do, you just drive out five hours south, Go to a park and do something that you didn't plan. So you've never been before with you and your family. Well, if you really want to start traveling the world and going to these exotic places, you should probably start with something that's five hours away. Something that's really easy, something that's attainable, and something that's doable. Because what's going to happen is if you like it, your brain's going to go, yeah, yeah, I want that more. And it's become an addiction. And when your brain starts being addicted to something, what is it going to do? It's going to find ways to make it happen. So if you can see your future in front of you, find the small steps it's going to take to achieve exactly what it is that you're going to, uh, what, what is it, what it is that you want to achieve. If you want to travel, if you want to do this, if you want to trade full time, find the small steps that it takes to do exactly that, and then do them, and then make it happen. Brad says, "Where there's a will, there's a way." Ladies and gentlemen, that is our time. Thank you so much for being here. Brad, get in the picture. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate all of you real life traders. You guys absolutely rock. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this video. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching here live, I really appreciate it. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions or you, you're like, hey, Jeremy, I want some more ideas of other ways, other things, other, other tips or tricks that I can do to make more money, email me anytime. My email address is jeremy at reallifetrading.com. His is Brad at reallifetrading.com. Guys, we're here to help. Our mission is to enrich lives. This webinar was entirely free. There's no sales pitch here. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you tell people about real life trading because here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. We are changing lives. He trades full time. I trade full time. We travel the world. We do what we want when we want to do it with our families, with the people that we love the most. If you want to do this, we will show you the way and we'll do it for free. Reallifetrading.com. Tell the world. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, love life, live life, and trade it. See you later. See you. Thank you.